Hey there, YouTubers, Zoomers. This is my next talk after a good hour long interview with Dr. Alan Potkin. I think you might have seen that, of course. I mean, I come from that premise that some of you will have seen it. <clears throat> but if you haven't, let me explain that Alan and I go back, and this was kind of my first opportunity to use my house as kind of a TV studio. I had two floors employed. I had my upstairs office and a downstairs studio. And so we connected over Zoom. We weren't in the same room, which eliminated a lot of audio problems. Now, let me just uh, review what I've been up to. I've been a busy bee. In terms of writing, I've been putting a lot of stories on Medium. I don't just confine my output to a particular platform, but then on the other hand, I don't spread myself too thinly, I hope. So a physics of the unconscious, dignity village, 40 solutions memorandum, more dev notes. All of these are fairly recent and a lot of it relates to the work I've been doing for a real school that is way more into training for the USCO Olympiad than I have been in the past myself. In other words, it's new to me, CP, which stands for competitive programming. And it's a very interesting take. It's kind of like speed chess in some ways. It has a lot connecting it to brain teasers, it kind of feels like Martin Gardner. You need to have some really interesting insights. And I've, you know, People who've gone before me learn about Cadane's algorithm long ago, but I'm kind of like plodding along the rear here. So it really is a case of my students helping to teach me. Now I learned from Steve Holden that done correctly, that can be a good pedagogical technique. In other words, where you sit there saying, teach me Django and ask kind of at least intelligent questions. So you guide the presentation from the point of view of a student and have the teachers teach or have the students teach you. Get them in the role of teacher. And with eighth graders, that's doable. In fact, I have pretty mature kids, I'd say. So I'd say that strategy is somewhat um, like I don't have a lot of choice because this isn't something I've specialized in. Where I've been coming from is let's expand the whole data structure concept to where we're also teaching them like office skills, you could call it, like tabular data management, pandas, numpy, things that don't involve the sport of being super fast, whereas CP is all about being super fast. Now, Speaking of super fast, so Alan and I were both on our feet in the sense of thinking on our feet. We were both sitting for that interview, but I think you could tell if you're an experienced interview listener that I was somewhat practiced in Alan's content. In other words, I was able to jump from topic to topic and ask questions that a true newbie, truly uninformed about Alan and just trying kind of off the cuff to ask leading questions would not be able to do. So I thought it was really my responsibility since I have known Alan for a long time and studied his work that regardless of how much we agree or disagree on political views or narratives or history or any of that, that because of my ability to ask incisive questions and lead him through his own work to some degree, I should do that. I should, I owe him that and I can turn it into something benefits others in, in a nonprofit framework. So that was my goal in the last and uh, issue. And I still have plenty of space to push forward with my views, which again, aren't necessarily those of any particular sponsoring entity or nonprofit framework. I've pretty much become a known quantity around Portland, at least in my circles. In other words, the fact that I'm writing about Bucky Village, or Bucky Village, Epcot West and Dignity Village and throwing in memes like Burning Man and Oregon Country Fair and Vortex. Vortex was a, a rock festival. 
that I didn't go to almost every other paragraph in here. I reassure the, the reader, quote unquote, that I wasn't there, but that's true. I have to pull together a lot of sort of documentaries I've seen. You know, I can't go on. They say you should only talk or write about your personal experience, but that includes a lot of scholarship, I have to say. I have to say that some of the stuff I talk about, I know from, I know more from books than from firsthand experience, but most of what I do talk about, I do have some firsthand experience with. Like the history that I go over when I talk about Bucky and I focus on Est and Warner Earhart and stuff like that. I was in the New York Area Center and the New Jersey Area Center doing stuff there for some two or three years, right? Over a long period and other things related there too. And um, I'm not the only one in my circle at Princeton who ended up getting involved in that stuff either. So. But I just wanted to reassure you in terms of my YouTubes here that I, I want to anchor most of what I do and what I've actually experienced and not just, as they say, make stuff up. So if you're new to this channel and you're wondering to what extent do I actually walk my talk and stuff like that, I'm saying don't worry about it too much, right? I'm telling you and showing you stuff that I really am doing and what more can I say? So algorithms and data structures, how do we link it to polyhedra? And I think obviously a polyhedron is a data structure, it's a graph. And in terms of data structures, we're always talking about graphs and graph theory. So it's kind of a no brainer to bring in the polyhedrons. But then what, what I do is I link it up with the Bucky Fuller presentation where we have different whole number volumes than you're used to or different volumes, some of which, more of which are whole number than you're used to. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm smoothly, I like to think in my own mind at least, integrating what's both conventional and unconventional, but creating something that's quintessentially, I would say American. In other words, it's not just a clone of what you might learn in a British school, for example. It's informed by some of the memes, you could say, that we get by virtue of living the history we're living in this particular part of the world. And uh, I hope you get that if you continue from the previous documentary, or excuse me, interview with Alan Potkin and push the little button at the end to watch the recommended video after that. It is about Alan Pike in the first part, but then I transitioned to a gentleman named Sam Hill. And he's mostly known from the English idiom or American idiom, what in the Sam Hill are you doing or thinking? Which means of all the crazy things or what brought you to this nonsense, that kind of thing. It's an expletive almost Sam Hill, but he was a real guy and he just did some some interesting things kind of off the beaten trail. So I, I hope you'll take some time and kind of dive into American history with me through my channel here by watching my older videos. I've already uh, got some interesting stories on tap for you there. So no commercials, enjoy. <laughs>